an organization's external marketing environment is constantly changing. Smart marketers recognize the need to monitor these changes with an eye to identifying important trends which shape opportunities and threats to their products. This is typically done through a SWOT analysis, which is a comprehensive analysis of the organization's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. A good SWOT analysis helps marketing decision makers focus on a strategy that takes advantage of the firm's strengths while correcting weaknesses and avoiding or reducing exposure to threats. One megatrend in the cultural and social environment that continues to have a strong impact on marketing strategies is health and wellness. A number of forces are driving the health and wellness trends. Aging population, record numbers of clinically obese people, higher rates of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, health scares, food recalls, toxic products and environmental disasters, greater information on health and wellness issues and solutions, medical research and technology. Increasingly, Americans are changing their attitudes and pursuing healthier lifestyles. As they make these decisions, some products and the companies that make them benefit. Others, however, stand to lose, particularly if they are perceived as being unhealthy. Health food retailers, manufacturers of exercise equipment, and companies that produce vitamins or nutritional supplements could all see increased demand for their products as a result of health and wellness trends. I would say that people are every day becoming more and more aware of what they should be doing to become healthier. You see ads on TV to join gyms, for power shakes, for running shoes. So all of those little bits and pieces work together to create the whole image of fitness and being healthy and healthy lifestyle, which I think we're starting as a nation to move back towards having a healthier lifestyle. Although people's perceptions of health and wellness differ, most agree that making conscious decisions to improve a person's overall state of health involve healthier food consumption, physical fitness, avoidance of potentially harmful products or behaviors. Many people believe that maintaining a diet rich in healthy food is the key to good health. Locally grown food, natural and organic food, foods rich in nutrients, low in fat and sugar, and high in fiber are all seen as good. You're getting food that is organically and naturally grown. Um, you're finding it at farmer's markets. You're finding it at uh, local retailers that are building those natural and organic sections, which for the health of the children these days is so important. What you don't want to see in foods that are processed today are high fructose corn syrups or hydrogenated oils, and by buying local, you avoid that. New products are being developed that are formulated to deliver specific health benefits. These functional foods have been engineered to provide a health benefit beyond basic nutrition, such as protection against cancer, aid to digestive health, a boost to immunity, a reduction of stress, or to relieve hip and joint pain. Because so many consumers need to decrease their consumption of salt and sugar, packaged and processed foods are being formulated to contain lower sodium and sugar. Drinks that are blended with both fruits and vegetables pack a nutritional wallop to satisfy the needs of busy people that eat on the run. Food companies and retailers are making it simpler for consumers to select these healthy products through nutritional labeling. A lot of people are concerned about eating too much sugar. Now you have a product that is the regular product and then you have the lower sugar products. So I think that um, all the new labeling is very beneficial for consumers who are interested in uh, making some good healthy choices. Nutritional profiling programs are very effective. Uh, we have them at the grocery store. There's a, a program called Guiding Stars, which is a three-star uh, program. Three stars being the best product, one star being not as healthy. Basically, it will help consumers to pick some of the products that are very healthy for them to, to eat. And then you have the... Uh, 
information that's directly on the front of the food label, which is a nutrition profiling uh, idea. And again, consumers uh, need to choose what is their health issue, and it gives them a lot of really great information, and I think it helps them to become more healthy. Daily physical exercise is generally thought to be a key to good health and wellness. Consequently, exercise and fitness equipment manufacturers, sports equipment, gyms, fitness centers, and professional trainers have all seen growth. The need for exercise and fitness clothing has been a growth category in the apparel industry. As more Americans seek ways to improve their physical fitness, savvy bicycle dealers are responding to this marketing opportunity by expanding their product mix to include fitness equipment, new bicycle products that appeal to cycling enthusiasts, and targeting new consumers. The last 10 years, the trend, the biggest trendsetter that we had was the uh, inception of the elliptical machine. And the elliptical machine really energized the industry. It really got people that maybe would have been treadmill customers, or they might have been bike customers, indoor bike customers, Paradigm customers, and brought them back in the store to find out what that new category was because it was a, a low impact, no impact exercise that really worked the entire body. A wider variety of bicycles are being sold to a wider range of consumers than ever before. Dealers serve the needs of a diverse market, primarily structured by age and motive or usage situation for bikes. The majority of people ride for recreation or fitness or health reasons. Reaching out to such a diverse market segment requires marketing communications which target specific markets with the right bike and solution selling in the store. When I first started in business, we took a shotgun approach to marketing. We had the newspaper, the radio, there was TV available, which we didn't take part of. And now, with so many media out there, we have to be very deliberate about how we advertise. And we just can't be everywhere all the time. So what's really changed is the ability for us to target our market. So when we advertise, we do niche marketing. And we're also driving people to a website, which we didn't have available for us for, to us 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You know, the website has been probably the, ne the number one, probably the number one most important tool that we have at our disposal now. One target of opportunity for the foreseeable future is baby boomers the generation born between 1946 and 1964. They currently comprise about a fourth of the total U.S. population and account for about 70% of the nation's wealth. To successfully target these older Americans, many of whom have only fond memories of riding a bike in their youth, the selling process needs to be less intimidating and dealers need to realize that their initial purchase of a bike opens the door to a longer-term relationship. Products associated with inactivity and obesity, especially in children, are receiving greater scrutiny. Childhood obesity is on a rise. Parents come home from work, they're absolutely exhausted. Kids sit in front of the TV and they eat junk. There are no other options, they're exhausted. So kids should be outside playing, exercising, moving around. We are over 50% obese and overweight children these days, and it's so sad. They should start at a young age being active, out on the playground. Um, they don't have to necessarily be in a gym lifting weights, but just moving. 30 minutes a day is so important. The market for traditional video games that only require children to sit on the couch in front of the TV and play the game is giving way to video games that emulate actual physical fitness activities. Avoidance of products that can cause illness and trying to cut down on unhealthy behaviors also is associated with health and wellness. As much as 65% of the U.S. population is overweight. Told to lose weight, many consumers have turned to diet programs. The growing obesity problem poses a threat to fast food restaurants. From a marketing perspective, an understanding of the health and wellness market and its structure is important when it comes to targeting the right buyers with the right products and marketing mix. The Natural Market Institute has identified five major consumer segments in the U.S. which differ with respect to their health and wellness attitudes and behaviors. Well-beings, food actives, magic bullets, fence sitters, 
and eat, drink, and be merry's. The market for healthy foods is being driven by the well-beings and food actives. Together, they make up about 40% of Americans. These are the consumers that are concerned about nutrition. They have a high usage rate of health-related foods and beverages, including dietary supplements and functional foods. They also are more likely to engage in active lifestyles and exercise. Magic Bullets have high usage of dietary supplements, over-the-counter and prescription medicines, and weight loss products. Fence sitters are mostly neutral on most health issues and least likely to believe in the benefits of food supplements, vitamins, and herbal products. However, they are most driven by family dynamics and concern for the health of their families. They are likely to opt for fresh and frozen foods that are convenient and nutritious, whole grain products and fortified foods, portion controlled snacks, and reduced sugar and salt products. Eat, drink, and be merry's. Almost a quarter of the U.S. population are unconcerned about health or the food they eat. They are more interested in taste and emotional gratification rather than health and wellness. Wellness may be the biggest socio-cultural trend of the 21st century, affecting the lifestyles of consumers, ranging from aging baby boomers to the youngest Americans. It has altered buying patterns across numerous product categories in the food and beverage industry and is increasingly a trend to reckon with in the beauty and spa product categories. Consumers are demanding products that are natural, organic, free from potentially harmful ingredients and chemicals, eco-friendly, and good for the people who consume them.